All right, so step number one here is going to be to get these windows covered because uh, this is taking up way too much real estate in this room. I've got one window over here. This is way too big. Um, and you know, that's the way it is. I'm not like gonna take a window out or anything like that. I'm just basically gonna cover it over with blackout curtains so no sunlight gets in here damaging things. And then the same thing uh, over on this side, there's another window. So like basically, I'm going to be putting my shelving across those windows. We'll have to see how that works out. I'm hoping that, you know, just with the blackout curtains up there that there'll be enough sort of pressure like up, up against it. Um, whereby I won't really be pushing in on the curtain, but rather the games will just sort of lean up against it. That's the general idea here. Um, another thing that I'm going to have to do is take this door in and uh, because it opens inward like this, I'm going to have to take it off its hinge and uh, mount it on the other side of the door so it opens out into the hallway. Otherwise, I lose all the real estate of this wall over here because I can't put shelving there if the door opens on the interior direction so that's going to be sort of the main goal of our actually already started uh, sanding I got about 11 boards of sanding done last night uh, for the shelving so I have to do that as well and I'll show you that here coming up next all right so this is the sanding portion of everything here uh, what I've got here are two by threes I'm starting with I also have some two by twos down there uh, the two by threes these are gonna be the shelf for the game room, meaning like the uh, horizontal, the horizontals basically. So right now I have probably more than I need, but I want to make sure that I have enough for the job because I really don't want to go back to the store to have to pick up more. Um, but I have 28 of these. So already I've done, uh, let's see here, I think I did about 11 of these so far. So did those yesterday and uh, I'm getting to this now. Basically what I have here uh, to do this is this Ryobi little sander here. This thing's pretty cheap. I got it from Home Depot. Uh, cost me like 35 bucks basically I think it was something running around there uh, for this and it seems to be doing the job okay I'm finding um, I'm going through a lot of sandpaper though because this wood here has these are basically just like two by three studs right so they're not like refined wood or anything like that so sometimes there's like little burrs and stuff on them that grab the sandpaper and it like ends up ripping it so it kind of sucks that way but um, that's basically the method I'm going with here so I might have to pick up some more sandpaper I don't know about that necessarily uh, sandpaper that I am using on here right now is 150 grit I'm by no um, stretch of the imagination here an expert in sanding this is the first time I've actually ever used one of these so um, don't take my advice for that like if you have other ideas you know have discussion in the comments below obviously uh, you can go ahead and do that because that would make a lot more sense than me trying to uh, you know give you advice about what sandpaper to use. Seems to be working okay, something a little bit uh, higher grit, meaning like a little heavier, might do the job a little quicker, but uh, I don't mind taking my time here, uh, making sure that these shelves are fairly smooth. They're not gonna be perfect, like there's chunks out of this wood, there's nothing I can do about that. I mean, I, you know, it's just what it is, I mean, they're wood studs, what do you expect, right? Uh, but to keep it on the cheap, this is what I bought, so this is what I'm gonna be getting on with. So, hope you enjoy. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm on to the next step here after everything was sanded. This is the next day, by the way. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna have to take a little bit of this um, length here. This is a two by three. What I've decided to do is some of the uprights in that room um, are gonna be those two by twos. But some of them are gonna be two by threes. That way I can uh, continue a shelf if I wanted to, or I can. Um, you know, stagger them a little bit or whatever I need to do basically. It gives me a little more options when I'm organizing the shelves that are going across. I uh, haven't totally thought about exactly like what height all those shelves are going to go um, just yet. I'm going to figure it out. I'll basically just base it off of like whatever kind of game I want to put in that section. So 
what I have here is a two by three. I got three of them that I need to cut um, and basically just notch them out um, to, to go around the, uh, what do you call it, like the base molding in the room, uh, which is essentially like five inches up, like around the edge of the whole room. I don't want to have to take that off or modify that in any way. So I've just decided uh, the best thing to do is to with what I've got to uh, cut these down. So basically I'm just gonna take uh, five inches up and then I'm going to also cut, um, you know, like maybe half an inch, three quarters of an inch uh, into it. And then that way I'll be able to fit that right around the molding and it'll go up nice. Uh, the bonus part about this whole thing is in that room it's eight foot ceilings and these are eight foot boards. So I'm not gonna have to do a lot of trimming. If I do, it's gonna be very slight, just like, you know, just cause maybe the ceiling's out a little bit or something like that. Uh, just very slight amounts if I have to actually trim these. But for the time being, I'm gonna get started on that job. Uh, don't make fun of the tools that I'm using necessarily. I'm using what I have at my disposal. Uh, I am no way a carpenter or anything like that. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but I'm gonna get this started right now. The detail to uh, these boards that I did not mention before is that uh, there is quarter round going um, around the room as well, like along those, um, what do you call them, baseboards or what are they, the trim basically. Uh, so that means on the bottom of these, I'm gonna have to cut off just like a little over an inch just to clear that. Uh, so these won't actually end up touching the floor, they'll just be sort of sitting um, snug up against the wall, otherwise, uh, those interfere with it and doesn't let this clear it. But in order to do that, I'm not going to use uh, the hand saw. I had to use that just because I was going kind of, I had to cut in a certain direction there. So that's why I was using the hand saw for that part of it. But uh, this part right here, I'm just going to end up using um, a electrical kind of saw. So I'm going to get into that right now. All right, so uh, my next step here is going to be painting. So I basically got uh, CIL premium paint here uh, that I'm going to be using uh, on this. I'm going to be painting them white. I'm not really going to show the step of painting. I mean, you guys probably already figured it out. Basically, I'm just going to roll it on with uh, a little roller here and uh, that's about it. So um, that's my next step. I'm going to do all these uprights and then um, I'm going to install the uprights. My plan uh, basically is to install the uprights, get them in place first, uh, and I have to pre-drill holes in them, but uh, get them into place first and then I'll figure out exactly how the shelves are going to um, attach into those, like how what the lengths need to be. Uh, the last time that I did this for the retro dungeon, I had a little bit of a problem because I made a whole bunch of different lengths. Uh, if you go back to my video, you can see it just because um, the retro dungeon, you know, it was a basement, so things are a little bit off, like the, you know, the floor is not perfectly level, those kinds of things. Uh, that go on in a basement. So uh, with that, there are some different lengths for different boards and all that kind of things, and it's really got a little bit confusing. So I'm trying to keep it a little bit more organized here in the sense that I want to get these uprights in first and then I'll deal with those. Uh, that way I'm not sort of confusing exactly what my lengths are um, for different sections of it. Well, folks, I'm still at it. It's kind of crazy uh, the amount of painting that this is going to require just because I have a lot of uh, boards here to go through like a lot of them. So um, that's gonna probably take like at least a couple of days just because it's not just a matter of painting the boards. I have to go over them twice. And as far as the tops go, like the parts that's gonna be facing out, I'm actually gonna give that a triple coat, um, even though I'll leave the sides in the back um, with two coats. Otherwise, this is gonna take me an insane amount of time. But um, I think that's probably the right way to do it. It looks pretty good with two coats. I just want to make sure that the, the part facing out looks the absolute uh, best that it can. So uh, right now, that's really what I'm working on uh, as far as this painting going, is going. And the next thing that you're going to see here is uh, I need to pre-drill 
into these boards uh, some holes to go up to put them up on the walls basically and then I'm going to be using some anchors uh, to hold them in place and I'm using three and a half inch uh, screws to hold those up so that's going to come next and now it's just a matter of drilling the pilot holes I'm going to do this because I don't want to split the wood and also at the same time um, I don't want um, to have to put a lot of you know muscle into it basically to have to turn those screws in if I have to do anything by hand which I remember on the last one I did have to do the finalizing parts of it uh, by hand so I'm hoping that this will uh, alleviate that a little bit and um, get the right size so what I've chosen is just a drill bit that's a little bit uh, smaller than the screw that I'm going to be using so the ones that I'm using here are 12 uh, by three and a half so they're three and a half inches long and 12 is just like I guess the size of it um, so those seem pretty happy and pretty decent should be pretty good to hold it up against the wall so that's it for now let's get to the drilling Just a quick update here, I've uh, got with the help of my wife here, ended up putting up the uh, blackout curtains. You can see, you can still see some light through them, but I don't think that's really going to affect much of anything even when the sun's like beating on them, as long as it diffuses the light a little bit. I'm sure it's not going to damage any like boxes and that's sort of the idea behind putting that up there. But also because the shelves will be running across these, um, basically, you know, it's it's hopefully tight enough that games will be able to lean up against it. I really needed that wall space badly. Um, obviously that gigantic window there was taking up way too much real estate. And uh, same thing over on this side of the room. So basically uh, what we did here was uh, my wife bought some blackout curtains and then we've basically just like staple gunned them in here. And then uh, she trimmed off the edges, pulled it as tight really as possible that we could. I don't know if you're gonna really see that with the shadow, but uh, yeah, so it's right in there and pretty solid. This one's more solid, obviously, because it's a little smaller, but uh, yeah, so uh, that's the update. Okay, so as you can see, I have the first uh, two boards here for my verticals um, up. That was quite the chore, actually, and I've made a few mistakes along the way, um, so I'm gonna share a very important tip with you right now. If you're putting it up against a window, like I was stuck doing here, um, do not put it right up against the, the window frame. Uh, the reason why is there's sort of like a bit of a stud hanging out there. If you try to use basically anything um, that opens up behind it, like an anchor of some sort, it won't work next to the stud. Same problem I had in the retro dungeon. I did not realize, I thought the stud was uh, under here. Like I said, I'm not a carpenter, so I kind of made an error there. But um, luckily what I did is I just moved it over basically like half an inch out, like the, the edge of this board half an inch out here so now it's uh, nice and in there and what I used and you should use these too uh, if you're planning on doing this or you have to anchor it to a wall like I do in this case instead of a stud I uh, end up using like these kind of toggle bolts uh, right here I'll show you how they work and get the open pack here for you um, but basically the way that they work is like this so you've got your bolt and uh, it just essentially screws um, in here like so and what you want to do and this is a good trick <laughs> uh, just have it hang out just slightly at the tip here and then you know what you do is you make a little hole in the wall you push that through and that'll open up on the other side problem I was having is I was using shorter screws so it wasn't giving this enough room to open up because you have to imagine uh, you got my board and then you need the clearance so what I did was I went out and I picked up um, the ones that are four inch. So if you're doing what I'm doing, make sure you use these four inch ones because uh, if you don't, you're gonna have a serious problem uh, like I did. And trust me, it was really frustrating trying to uh, sort it all out when the toggle bolts just would not stick. So um, like I was saying, oh, that's how these work. I highly recommend using them. Um, they, they're really rated really well and like those aren't gonna move anywhere, they're solid to that wall, I have no worries that it's on a stud, it's gonna hold for sure. So I got four of those um, in that one, and on this one here I've got three, but then at the top I have a wood screw because I did hit a stud um, at the very top there, so 
that's that so far. So that's the progress that I've made thus far and I'm going to um, end up putting the rest of these uprights in, hopefully uh, by the end of tonight. Okay, so this part of it's um, set up now. I've got all my uprights in. That was a bit of a chore um, just because of some difficulties that I did have uh, getting those in, but they look perfect now and super pleased with the way that it turned out. So I did it right, just my carpentry skills might be a little bit off. But anyway, um, that being said, the next thing I'm going to do is actually get the horizontals going across here. Uh, for this one, I'm just gonna do the top row um, all the way around because I do wanna measure this for shelving that I'm going to put in on the top um, level basically so I can display like um, my box consoles. So that's what I'm gonna be doing here. Uh, so what I gotta do is I'm actually starting with this side right here. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that is because I have over on the other side a very small, let's see if I can turn this here, a very small section I had to kind of create. I couldn't go from the wall all the way over here because it's longer than eight feet. So I had to make like a smaller section right here. Um, that being said, uh, these are small sections. I don't really want to start cutting full boards into pieces to do that. I'm going to take the straps from the end of this uh, side right here and that'll be enough to make, you know, the ones from there. So that's really the master plan here. All right, well, I'm not really going to share like these measurements with you because they're really custom for the room that I'm building this in, but essentially what I'm doing is making sure that um, this meets up with the edge of any two by two. And then on this side, I want it to be half of the um, two by threes that are on their side. So basically that's going to cause uh, this to meet up right against the wall. That's going to cause this end here to um, be halfway on that beam so I can attach one right beside it if I wanted to. And uh, then basically that makes it like the full length and the correct length uh, for what I'm doing here. But this board here has like something really nasty spewing out of it at the end. I don't know, it's like sap or something. I don't know why, but uh, I won't be using that into the board ideally. I'm going to be cutting from this end and then I'll cut my next piece uh, from there. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so uh, what I gotta do is basically drill all the pilot holes. I already started on uh, this pile right here. I've also started on another pile, but uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm setting the, insetting the holes um, to half, half an inch, I believe, is the spot where I put the holes in these boards. So that should work out pretty well. Something I did notice while I was cutting and uh, drilling these is that they probably need another coat of paint. They're still a little bit see-through as far as like you can see the underlying wood underneath and like little imperfections and uh, some of the boards had like stamps and things on them so you can see those stamps through the paint so that's fine though because really I needed to do um, the ends of these because that you know when I cut them or whatever um, now they're bare so I'd have to touch them up anyway so while I got the paint out I might as well just do that so it's kind of a blessing in disguise I actually do recommend uh, doing it this way don't cut your boards first and then paint them all because um, you can imagine like having to paint these little sections uh, versus you know painting an entire board. Uh, this has two coats of paint on it right now uh, because I did the whole boards. So if you end up cutting them and then you're like, well, if I cut them, it's gonna have the bare part, and then I gotta paint them. Um, you're gonna you're gonna save yourself actually more time if you just paint the board straight up um, first and then go back and and give it a third coat. Um, you know. And touch everything up from there like where the holes are and everything uh, you're gonna have to do that anyway so that's really my advice uh, for this <laughs>
so um, as usual with any project here, I've got uh, a miscalculation that I've made, which isn't a huge deal, it's not a big problem, but it just means I gotta go back to basics on a part of this, which means I have to go back and resand a bunch of new boards. I actually needed nine additional boards. My original plan uh, was to use those two by twos um, all, all throughout the room, and then when I kind of gave it some extra thought, I realized uh, in some spots I would need the two by three so that uh, two shelves could butt up against each other. So that being said, um, the idea is uh, also, I was looking at my old game room and I kind of got counted the shelves that I had there and I had seven shelves going up and this actually um, will take eight. So that was another miscalculation I made uh, along with the two by threes, the extra two by threes that I used along the walls um, in some of these instances. So I ended up having to go buy nine more boards. I'm gonna sand all those down, paint them, get them prepped, get them cut, get them all the other, th all the other steps. But basically um, that was just sort of one little bit of an error. But in the meantime, um, while some other paint's drying for some of these other shelves, cause I gotta get them out of the room so I can prepare the new ones. Um, I am getting started on these. I've just basically taken uh, this, this small section, which is that one over in the corner there. And I've uh, pre-drilled the holes, as you can probably see from the video. And now I'm just sort of putting the screw in a little bit, just tightening it down a little bit in there. Uh, and those, they fit pretty snugly, so it's kind of nice. Uh, I'll be able to screw those down and I'll get started on that. So Alright, so I just decided to make my life a little bit easier instead of having to measure everything perfectly. Uh, what I've got here is a block that I'm going to use, this is 8 inches tall and that's going to be like the perfect height basically um, for this so that everything will be nice and even and the games will fit perfectly and they won't come out. So you can see that there, if, a game does, if something happens and decides to go that way, it's just going to basically hang there but you can still pull them straight out. So that's kind of nice. Um, that's the plan. So, all right. So my first shelf is in here behind me. You can see it uh, looking pretty good. I got to do some touch-up paint jobs on the trim just because I banged it a couple of times while I was doing this, but uh, pretty good. And I mean, everything's really solid. So the next wall is going to be this little wall here, which basically was the other side of that small one. This the small pieces came off of the boards that go here. So. Figured I'd do this one next and I got some touch-ups already I can see I need to do to some of these boards but uh, that's where it's going to begin so I'm going to do this section here and then I'll probably do this very long middle section here that like I said I was a little bit concerned about um, the distance that it has to cover but we'll see what happens and if you know worse comes to worse I will figure out some sort of solution to that problem um, but as it stands this should work out perfectly just a matter of getting everything screwed in place all right I got my boards here behind me these are the um, four the four foot boards that I'm going to be using for the upper shelving I've got a couple more shelves that I didn't estimate correctly I need a couple more of these boards so I'm going to do all the painting and everything there and then I, I'm going to attach it right to the frame of everything but um, there are a couple of things that I wanted to I do in order to have I'm basically going to be attaching it with this rope um, so I bought some rope and then also I had to buy a hole of hole saw for it and I just bought like the smallest one I really could find because that rope's not that thick I'm gonna tie a knot in the rope and then I'm gonna attach it to the wall with uh, these and I'm just gonna put them into wall anchors in the wall so that should I think work out pretty decently um, I don't think it's absolutely necessary I'm gonna really fasten these really kind of hardcore to the frame
Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the final product of a very, very, very long, long project, rather, uh, that it took me to complete. So, uh, pretty cool right here. Uh, one thing I did want to show uh, here, I did make a slight modification. I had finished this before, and I did not like uh, the way it was turning out, specifically uh, in this area right here that I'm pointing at. Um, there was two boards that were meeting up like right next to each other um, running into each other like this one and that one kind of thing or maybe it was this one and this one I'm not totally certain but um, I did not like the way that, that worked so what I did was I took a this is a 2x2 two two here and then I took a 2x3 put it next to it so I could drill directly into it uh, the reason was because where these were meeting up I had drilled um, angularly into into the board and it looked ugly and it did not hold well and then I had supports underneath holding it up and I just did not like the look of it. It looked sloppy. Um, basically what I did was I sat on it for a couple of days, thought about it and came to the realization that that was the proper solution to that problem. And so now I fixed that all up and now you can see like it's much nicer looking um, than it would have been before. I've also put up the shelves above here and I've just tied them with rope um, and attach them to the top of the structure. So I just basically screwed them in on either ends, other uh, four foot boards. And then I just took the ropes and uh, put them through and I need to trim those ropes off a little bit cause they kind of look a little hideous, but uh, still pretty cool uh, nonetheless. And that's the entirety of that project. Same thing over on this side as well. Um, but yeah, so that's the entirety of the project. Uh, I know this is kind of a long video, but I hope you enjoyed that and hopefully it was informative for you. And thanks again for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Feel free to thumbs up this video, comment down below, and I will see you all later.